You guys are probably the best subscribers on the planet. Hey guys, thanks for coming back. I wanted to thank everybody for submitting footage. When I got up this morning and checked my email, I was amazed. I had a ton, a lot of response and a lot of subscribers that submitted footage. A couple of people submitted footage, but they weren't subscribers. I probably should have made that more clear, but you know, subscribers submitted footage, you think? Anyway, I wanted to thank you. If your footage didn't get chosen, uh, don't feel like it's not because it wasn't good enough or anything like that. Everything I received was fantastic. I didn't receive one bad file. I may be doing more of these depending on how many likes this video gets and the view count and stuff like that, but um, we'll see how it goes. So let's get into it and I hope you enjoy. Okay, let's start on shot number one. This is Steve from St. Louis, um, United States. And Steve has a beautiful image here, so we'll bring up the scopes to get a reading on what we have to work with. All right. Now see right out of the gate here in the YC waveform, you can tell this is a great, uh, <clears throat> you can tell this is a really great, uh, the exposure is perfect in this image. You know, the, the YC waveform here shows from top to bottom the uh, contrast of the image, the tonality of the image. So we've got nothing blown out, plenty of room to play with in the brights and highlights, nothing crushed in the blacks, plenty of room to play with there too. So this is perfect. So we start there, <clears throat> and let's see, make sure I'm on the image, yup. The image, and I start with Lumetri Color, and we start to bring up the tonal range right out of the gate. So I put my S-curve in, and while I'm doing this, you could notice the YC waveform. Let me switch that to where it's larger. There we go, and so now it's bigger at the bottom, so hopefully you can see that better. Um, Pushing up the tonality, bringing the shadows down. And someone uh, had a great question, by the way. Why do you use an S-curve? You know, why don't you just use a slider for contrast? And the reason is, if you'll notice, the reason it's called an S-curve, other than it's in the shape of an S, um, you'll notice when I push the highlights up, look how the anchor point for the very hottest, uh, hottest value stays anchored in place. That keeps it from blowing out or crushing uh, some of your highlights as you bring those highlights up. Same thing with the shadow. With that anchor point right here, this, when I pull those darks down, this keeps the darks from crushing on the very bottom to where you get a hard edge. And I'll show you what that looks like. If we brought that down too, as I pulled the, <clears throat> pulled the curve, See, so it's our whites are at the top, blacks are touching bottom. But if we look at the image, holy moly. So we'll take this back. Put that point back and then pull the S where it's just touching. There, there we go. So that's tonality that's changed. So we'll move scopes out of the way and <clears throat> take a peek at what we did the before and the after. Okay, perfect. Now this shot to me is looking a little bit uh, toward the yellow. You know, when you look at certain colors like concrete and buildings, um, concrete and buildings always tend to have a kind of a pinkish or, or yellow cast to them. And I find it a little more pleasing to tweak the white balance so you get a little more neutral. Um, color, so we just, uh, I'm just going to eyeball this and look at it. Actually, yeah, 
look at your vector scope when you check this out. This is for saturation. And you can see the vector scope is telling us that this whole shot is leaning toward the yellow and reds, primarily yellow. So I'm going to take the white balance. I'm going to push it a little toward the blue. Now you see how that shape in the vector scope is centering now instead of being so heavy. I'm going to look at our image. Now see that's already looking better. Look at the uh, the concrete in the buildings. Let's see if I go back to where we were. Look how yellow. Let me pull this. Goes to blue. Takes that yellow out of there. That's great. Perfect. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is uh, use the RGB Parade. That's this scope. That has uh, that concerns itself with color balance. So we can look at this and see what's going on. The way this reads is just like the YC waveform up here. It's from left to right. So the whole image that we're correcting, there's the red channel from left to right, the green from left to right, and blue from left to right. Um, and you can see, if you look closely, like look in the blue channel, you see where there are these bright spots right here and here? That's the arch in the shot. So you can kind of see that ghosting of that so you can tell what's going on. This hard, thick band on each of them at the very top, that's all of the sky up here. So let's try to balance the color a little bit on this shot. So it looks like our reds need to come up on the high end. Pull them up so it kind of meets with the green there, see? We're going to pull the blue down a little bit to balance that out. <clears throat> when you're doing this, this is more about color correcting, kind of getting the, the image back to a neutral or more realistic looking state. Pull the blues up on that bottom a little bit. Not much. Let's pull the reds down on the bottom a little bit. Okay. So now if we go before, look at our scopes before. That was the image before, and there's the image after. We've expanded the tonal range of the image. Great. Okay, cool. All right, now with those the adjustments I just made, it looks like to me the concretes, the grays, are looking a little bit yellow again, so I'm going to push this a little bit toward the blue. Now is the place where I start kind of looking at it with my eye. I've checked the scopes, everything looks good. You know, there's nothing that's crushed on the YC waveform. The vector scope doesn't show any saturation that's out, outside the boundaries that, um, that would be oversaturated, which could cause a, a myriad of problems, anything from artifacting to banding to you name it. Uh, not to mention that it's just not pleasing to look at when a color is, is oversaturated. I think I'm going to pull this a little bit into the green on the white balance up here. There we go. Now that that's done, I'm going to punch a little bit more contrast in the image, but I don't want to push it too much farther on the curves. You see how, how extreme that is? Um, that's already, you know, borderline maximum that we should, I think, go. But let's go back and do this through Lumetri Colors under the basic correction right here, the top tab. We're going to go down to shadows or blacks. We'll see which one works best. Well, we want to bring some of those rich darks back in, so we're going to push the shadows down. There we go. See, there's before, after. Nice. Let's see if we can push a little bit more on the blacks in. More contrast. There we go. All right, now let me check my original image. Let's see. Very cool. So I'm a little bit, I'm way more blue on the, <clears throat> on the final image. We go back here. We're going to push that old yellow out of there even farther. So there you go. Now I think on the final, um, I do believe the one thing I added, and that's just, this is, a, again, this is a lot of this is personal preference. It's very subjective. But for this shot, I really liked uh, the fact that it was shot and framed dead center. This is perfectly symmetric. And um, I just, I thought it would be wise. I wondered what a vignette would look like. The, the sky is this beautiful blue, clear sky, which is great. But there's no there's no definition in there because there's no clouds. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the way it looked that day. 
So I went down and threw a vignette around this. Since the image is centered like that and, and it's so symmetric, I thought the vignette could even pull more focal attention toward the arch. And again, what, what this does is it gives a little tonal range to the edge of the shot with the sky. So you see before and after. Again, that's personal preference. I think adding a vignette like this can be very cinematic looking, um, but you know, like anything else, it can be overdone. So this is our final image. So let's switch real quick to the other, uh, the final shot that I did the correction on because I have one other thing that I did to this shot that I want to show you guys. larger. Now you notice that this shot does not look like this shot and there's a, a big reason. This shot I, I threw on a little bit of sharpening. It's only got 20. That's not too bad. That's that's about the max that I'd push it in any any uh, sharpening on uh, in Premiere Pro. Past that it, you start to get this really unnatural crunchy kind of look. Uh, 20 for me is about the max that'll that'll just give it enough edge and refinement and uh, without over sharpening it. What I did on this shot is look here on the timeline. This is an adjustment layer and on this adjustment layer, an adjustment layer allows you to put things like color corrections or filters or what have you on the layer instead of the footage itself. That way if you have like say one, two, three, four, five clips uh, on a timeline and they all require the same exact color correction so instead of having to go and paste that color correction through each one of these you put an adjustment layer above them you know and just drag that adjustment layer over everything so whatever adjustment has been made on the adjustment layer will translate to the footage underneath but on this adjustment layer I've done one thing and that's add this the Gaussian blur this is a wonderful trick that has a very cinematic um, kind of romantic feel to it I want to turn it off. There's the shot without the Gaussian blur. Great color balance, I think. I think the it's it's leaning a little cool, but the white balance isn't so yellow anymore. Um, but this is such a beautiful shot, you know, and it is buildings, and I thought it would be nice to kind of soften this a little bit. So with a Gaussian blur effect added to the adjustment layer, and around, I've got the blurriness around 20, 23, and the opacity at 100%. Uh, but the trick on this is make this adjustment layer the blend mode set to overlay. See right there. And what happens, let me turn it back on, you get this really romantic sort of Gaussian blur focus. So it leaves sort of a little glow around everything, you know, especially hot spots like down here and in here. Again, I'll turn it off, turn it back on. So it softens everything, but notice the detail. You still see all these tiny little windows. It doesn't remove detail. The first time I showed this to someone, they were like, yikes, you're going to blur the whole image. I'm like, no, we're going to soften it a little bit. And that's what the overlay does. The overlay lets it just bring this hot, this haloed kind of glow around things, which makes it, um, like I said, kind of romantic and enhances the image. So before and after. Okay, on to the next. Okay, for the second shot, this beautiful shot by, and I am so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Ante B of Switzerland. Um, again, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, this is a gorgeous shot, and uh, the first thing we did on the shot was um, correct a little bit. We've got a little bit of a tilt on the horizon, I think, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to rotate that just a little bit. This is the great thing about shooting in 4K, too, when you edit on a 1080 timeline. You can rotate uh, something like this, and you'll notice, you know, we've got these black edges showing now, but we can enlarge these. We can enlarge the image quite a bit because it's shot in 4K, so we're not losing any resolution whatsoever, which is awesome. Okay, so that's leveled out a little bit. All right, first things first, bring up the scopes. And... There's our YC waveform, and again, I'm not even going to look at the image. I'm just going to look at the waveform and let it tell me what I need to do. So we're going to get the curves, start with our S curve, push those highlights up, and bring our shadows back down. 
This is another image that's exposed, you know, perfect. This is the kind of exposure you want when, again, look at that. When you turn this off, everything's in the middle. That's why you want to shoot flat, uh, in case you were wondering. Everybody's always talking about shooting flat. Why shoot flat? Well, this is why, because it preserves the details in the image. Um, you know, once something is crushed, you know, if it were like, turn this back on, if the image in the scopes was like this, and you see this hard green line, those are blown out whites, okay? And the same for shadows, you know, if you come in, open up your image or you shoot on a profile that's way, way, way high contrast, and, and your image looks like this, you see that hard green line? That's crushed black, that means it's pure black. There's zero dynamic range left. There's no details at all left in the shadow, it's pure black. And the reason that's terrible, uh, is you can't get that back in post. There's nothing left to work with. Once it's gone, it's gone. It's baked into the footage. So that's why you, you try to shoot flat images. I know a lot of you have mentioned that, you know, on your on your mobile device, the image looks terrible. And when you first bring it up on your computer, the image looks terrible. Yes, it does. You're right. But it's supposed to. That's the way you shoot if you plan on doing uh, post-color work. All right, so. That and then while we're here, we're going to look at the RGB parade, check these colors and balance them out a little bit. Pull that blue down on top, and bring the reds down to meet kind of where the blue is. Same for the green. There we go. Saturation looks good, though it's leaning a little toward yellow. So we'll go into the uh, white balance under the basic correction. And we're going to push that a little bit more toward blue. And pull back toward the pink a little bit and center that saturation. It's perfect. I think. We'll see. Let's look. Great. Okay. Okay. So that's... To be honest, this is the basic color correction to this. Oh, minus. Let's throw on sharpen. And we'll bring it up to... Let's see what... 13 gets us, so before, after, before, after, that's great, that's just enough, just enough to give it uh, a little bit of a sharpen and, and clean look to it without making it look too crispy and crunchy. Alright, so that's the basic color correction, let's switch now to the uh, final that I did. This is another fun trick. If you've got an area in the sky that is pretty wide open, like this is, you know, there's a there's not anything intruding into the sky much up here, um, you can build this file, and I use this every now and then on my skies. Oh, look over here in the other window. This is just a Photoshop file, okay? And it's really easy to build. You build it at 1080 by 1920, uh, 72 pixels, and you just do a graduation on a transparent background, open a new file and choose a transparent background, and then do a graduation of a royal kind of blue to nothing in the center, and then save this as a PSD, not a TIFF or a JPEG. If you do that, this area becomes solid white. You don't want that. You want it to be transparent. But save it as a PSD, a Photoshop file, then you can bring it in, put it on top of your footage like I've done here, pull this window back open. All right, and you'll notice, let's see, again on that layer we set the blend mode to overlay. If we don't, if we set it to normal, see what happens. That looks terrible. That's just a, an overlay, you know. So we'll set that to overlay, and what this does is it enhances areas that are losing a little bit of dynamic range, like these clouds up here. Watch when I turn this off. See how it punches a little bit of dynamic range back into those clouds, so there's a little more detail, which is nice. So that's the extra thing I did to uh, to that file. Let me make sure, double check everything. Okay, I thought there was something else. Now the other thing is uh, I worked on the saturation a little bit, and what I did was on the uh, saturation curve. I placed anchor points all around this. These are all round in the center, kind of like these are when you start. But I put anchor points in. That way I can, al I can alter one color and it keeps the other color or joining colors anchored and they don't change. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to up the blue within this. And I wanted to kind of bring some of the greens back up in the, um, in the trees around here. And especially these beautiful aqua green areas on the shorelines in here. 
Oops, let me turn this off. Look at that. Okay, that's Lumetri's off and then Lumetri on. So watch if I pull the blues and push them back and desaturate them. You see how that the, the water loses its its uh, vibrance? push it that way it becomes very right again you know I've mentioned this before these are slightly overkill I wouldn't do this for broadcast I'd pull back a little bit but I think it's easier to see on the screen because the whole purpose of this is to is a tutorial you know I'm not trying to deliver final footage to someone it's to show you guys the possibilities of what you can do same thing with the green you know when I pull this green back in these yellows see how the colors get really muted which, again, that's kind of a cool look, too, but, you know, this is all based on perf personal preferences or the project that you're working on. Okay, so that's that. And then I did another quick change to this where I applied that same Gaussian blur overlay to this because, again, this is such a beautiful shot, um, and I wondered what that would look like. So go to the next frame. And see look at that it just gives it this very dreamy almost mystical quality if I take the adjustment layer and I turn that off see that's before and then after you see it puts a slight beautiful glow around everything it makes it just um, very pretty pretty to the eye very pleasing to the eye okay image number three from Gabrienne I think I'm saying that right Gabrienne This image I chose because of its challenge. You'll notice that this image is primarily, it's a gorgeous shot. Let me look at the scopes real quick. There's a lot of uh, tonal range already in the image, okay? And that's okay. But if you look at the uh, vector scope here, you'll notice that the color shift of the entire image is, is toward the, the oranges, the reds and yellows. So I thought this is going to be challenging. So this one would be a, would be a good, uh, good one to talk about. I didn't use the scopes to start on this because I already know that there's plenty of tonal range here. So I'm just going to kind of look at this and see what, how far I can push certain things. So I'm going to bring the contrast up, the highlights up a little bit, and then bring the darks back down. And you'll notice what this also does is it ups the saturation of everything. See, so look, oh, look how much more hot this became. Again, we'll look at the scopes. You see there? Turn this off. Look at how uh, how saturated the color is here. You turn it back on. That's just with a contrast adjustment. You know, using an S curve on the uh, on the curves. Uh, you see right there. See how much more saturation you got. So you have to keep that in mind also. And looking at the scopes here, we can see there's one little spot here that is looks like it's crushed and and that's uh, right here where the sun's peeking through on the image and that's okay you know i mean is that's the tough thing about shooting and and you and using manual exposure which you should do for most of your stuff um so you can have more control but sometimes you have to make a conscious decision you know when you're facing the stu the sun it's do i expose for the sky and and darken everything down um so I can get a little more detail in the clouds, or do I expose for these areas down here and pick up some of these waves and the intricate details going on and sacrifice the sky blowing out a little bit? So when I say this is blown out, it's certainly not a criticism. It's just it is what it is, and sometimes you have to make a choice as to which one you want to sacrifice. But I have to say, all things considered, Gabrielle did a great job of, of exposing this um, kind of in the middle, all things considered. First thing I did was uh, up the contrast using that S curve up, up the tonal range, and you can see it's a beautiful shot. As I was looking at it, I thought, you know, what would be really cool is if I could bring out, since we've upped the contrast and the tonal range on it, look what's happening over here, up in these areas, and up in these areas, you're starting to see these beautiful blues trying to peek through, and um, and to, to some extent out here in these waves. So I wanted to try to find a way to bring those back in. And what I did to do that, I'll switch to my final image. And that's with my color correction. And you'll notice with the hue and saturation curve over here, I've anchored everything down, but I've pulled the blues as far as they would go. So since there's not a lot of blue in the shot, period, I've pulled it to its maximum out here to the edge to pull up whatever blue is there. It'll pull that blue 
and reveal it a little bit better. And you can see it here. You can see these blues starting to peek in and peek through. But since this shot is primarily a reddish, you know, pinkish kind of shot, it's missing, you know, the opposite spectrum of the color, which are the blues. So I thought it would make sense to balance the shot with the... Uh, with bringing up some of these blues. Now, because the shot again is facing toward the sun and this is the color of the shot, this is what it probably looked like or close to what it looked like. Um, so you can't create, you know, something from nothing. If it doesn't exist in the shot, you can't always just make it appear, but there are certain tricks you can do. Now you'll notice on this image, I was able to pull a lot of these blues back. And the way that I did that was using the hue and saturation curve. See how I anchored everything? But on the blue area down in here, I've yanked it way outside the super saturated area. So that's what brought up all these blues in the shot, but left everything else alone. For example, if I had grabbed, say, this yellow and pushed it also, now look at the shot. Now that is way, way, way too much contrast. If you'll bring up the scopes and look, check this out. That's telling you. That I, to be honest, I've never even seen crushed scopes before, but yeah, see that yellow? way too much so we bring this yellow back and we'll watch that vector scope there that's a little safe this is outside a little bit but the, the primary mass of the shape is still within the guides Get out of the way. and there we've got that so we're at this point now but I really really wanted to to come kind of full spectrum with the color spectrum uh, and bring up some of these blues more because these yellows are so pretty and so hot and these pinks. So the way I did that was on the same clip, we've got the Lumetri color that we've, that I've shown you already that we've adjusted. But then I came down here and created a mask. Let me back out so you can see that. And on this mask, <clears throat> It's huge. You see, I extended past the boundaries of the actual image, and that's on purpose because what I needed to do was feather this mask. That's what this dotted line is. I needed to feather the mask so the correction that I do that won't be so obvious. Otherwise, it would be a hard line here where the mask is. So I need to pull that mask way outside the boundaries so the feather doesn't come back into the shot. And what this did was on the fast color corrector, I just took the color... Uh, spectrum and I pulled it toward the blues that way it only colored every colored everything blue all right turn the mask off we're zoomed back in and now we'll turn this back on now see what it did isn't that beautiful now you've got more of a full color spectrum going there so again the before and then the after and then as I got to looking, um, I had to, see, you know, I kind of, I thought that this side was still a little bit hot, so I did the same thing, came down and put another fast color corrector on there, and another mask. Again, it goes outside the boundaries of the page, or sorry, not the page, the image. Um, so it only grabs this area, and what that looks like, turn the mask off, is that. So see, now it's balanced on both sides. So I thought, you know, this is looking pretty good. We rewind for a second and go back through the shot. So that looks pretty good. But the one thing that, that was still bothering me about the shot are these beautiful waves that are happening down here. You see these? And if I zoom in, <coughs> excuse me, and I look... Let's go in 200%. If I go in and I look at these waves, it's hard to kind of you know, separate the waves color from everything else, but look at these. These are actually kind of muddy, you know, and there's a, there's a lot of green still in there, and there's still a lot of pinks and yellows. But I thought it would be nice if we could, if we could find a way to crisp these waves up a little bit. So to do that, I went in and put another mask back out. Take a look. Again, extending off the page, <clears throat> or off the uh, image. And then I, again, come down to the bottom here. I brought the contrast up. See on the input levels, on the, on the highlights, I brought the contrast way up here. And then we bring this up, and look what happens to those great little crests on those waves. Those pop a little bit. Now, we have to be careful. And I'll show you why. I'm going to back out again, and I'm going to turn the mask 
uh, visually. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to slide these in a crazy way so you can see the difference. So if I really do this, look what happens. You see over here, you start to, the, <clears throat> the color correction becomes obvious. So you've got to be very careful how much you push this. So when I push this up, it's also making the, the darks a little bit, uh, a little soft and washed out. So what I do on those is I pull up the contrast a little bit too on the, on the low end over here, of the input level. So these areas still remain the same. And this still looks a little bit red and yellow compared to this bluish color. So we're going to pull that, pull this a little bit toward the blues. There we go. Now these two areas blend together and it doesn't appear so obvious where the color correction is occurring. Then I think I've got one more um, on there and that is 17 sharpen just to crisp it up a little, just a little bit. But then uh, on the sunspot, right here in the center, if I turn that <clears throat> on, turn the mask off, hold on. There's a subtle difference. I don't know if you can see this on screen or not, but there's just a subtle difference where I took down the output levels just enough to kind of preserve the details that are going on in here because we've, we've done so much contrast adjustment to the whole image. All these fine little details were, were kind of getting lost. So yeah, it's hard to see it on screen, but that just helped preserve that a little bit. But that's pretty much it for that shot beautiful shot but again all this is very subjective I thought that this would be nice to introduce you know, more of the blues uh, colors in the spectrum since this is primarily a pinkish reddish kind of shot and uh, I think that makes it look beautiful so there you go well that's all I've got I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you're new please subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a like if you don't mind and uh, throw suggestions down there on the comments below about what I can do next or things you guys are thinking about or wondering about. Um, I'm always looking for new things to talk about and, and to show. So anyway, you guys have a great day. Thanks again.